It's February 3rd, 2021. Today I'd like to talk about why asthma might actually protect you from poor outcomes in COVID disease. So before I do that, I would just like to go over a slide uh, where viruses, particularly viruses that cause respiratory infections, have long been known as the most common trigger for asthma. So this is a figure looking at ages from you know infancy to over adulthood, so over 50 years of age, and looking at the incidence of asthma in these individuals and the cause of it, and looking at different viral infections. So in infancy, RSV or respiratory syncytial virus is the major cause of asthma. There is uh, in adulthood or young adults or even in adulthood, rhinoviruses tend to be the major cause of asthma in disease. But there are several other viral infections that um, exacerbate asthma, and those include adenoviruses and uh, metanumovirus, etc. Uh, asthma is a chronic condition that affects the airways of the lungs. In a healthy, normal airway, the alveoli are normal, but the smooth muscles are relaxed and the airway space is large. In an asthmatic airway, there's thickening of the smooth muscles and thickening of the walls, so the airway space is much smaller. And during an asthma attack, though, that space is even smaller, the smooth muscles are now tightened and air gets trapped in the alveoli. And because of this, the symptoms of asthma include coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and tightness of chest. So there are two major kinds of asthma, although this is a very complex syndrome. There's allergic asthma, and this is when people have uh, allergic reactions to some kind of allergen. So it could be pollen or dust mite or cockroaches or, um, say, cat dander. So in this kind of uh, allergic asthma, it's mediated by a special type of antibody known as IgE. And cytokines secreted by types of T cells known as Th2 cells skew the T cell response to a certain uh, set of cytokines. A number of cells are activated, including mast cells and vesicles during allergic asthma. There's mucus secretion, which is I and then IgE secretion, and you end up having many of the symptoms. Now, several people do not have allergic asthma, but they manifest similar symptoms through non-allergic um, through non-allergic asthma. And this can be because of many different reasons. So the most common um, cause of non-allergic asthma is viral infections. And in the previous slide, we went over several viruses that can induce or exacerbate asthma in people who already have existing asthma. Weather or cold weather is an also another factor that can induce asthma in uh, young adults and um, adults and even children, stress and other, other conditions also can trigger non-allergic asthma. So while they're quite different, allergic asthma and non-allergic asthma, both of them have common symptoms of coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and tightness of chest. So in both cases, you have thickening of the walls of the airway, a tightening of suit muscles, and very little airway space available for someone to breathe normally. If you look at the CDC website, a number of conditions are listed for adults with following conditions who are at increased risk of severe illness from COVID disease. And these include cancer, chronic kidney disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, obesity, sickle cell disease, heart condition, smoking, type 2 diabetes. They also listed are conditions that might be at increased risk. So this is just suggestive but not yet proven. And this is a fluid list that the CDC maintains. And included there are asthma and other conditions, including immunocompromised states. Given the strong history that viral infections can actually ex exacerbate asthma, it's not surprising that the CDC uh, indicated that mild or moderate asthma is a risk factor for developing severe disease. There have been several studies out that have been published in the last year, and I would like to talk briefly about two studies and a letter to the editor um, about this first study, looking at the characteristics and outcomes of asthmatic patients with COVID disease. This was done on a limited number of patients, about 750 patients that were studied in this study. And also a new study that came out this um, month where they looked at different entities and did a meta-analysis of over 100,000 patients with and without asthma. 
And the bottom line really with both studies is that asthma was not associated with a higher rate of death, ICU admission, or acute respiratory disease syndrome among COVID-19 patients. Uh, in the second study, really, people who were obese and also had asthma may have required some extra attention because they might uh, have needed prolonged mechanical ventilation. So the results from both these studies are a little surprising. And what I'd like to end with is really a summary from the letter to the editor talking about some hypotheses why asthma might actually protect you from getting severe symptoms of COVID. So I'd like to end with a figure that was provided by doctors Fan and Singhanaigam uh, in a letter uh, talking about the first manuscript that was published and several different hypotheses that they proposed and that came out from the original manuscript to um, address or why asthma might actually protect you from poor outcomes. So one uh, interesting finding is that in asthmatics, really, there's altered viral receptor for SARS-CoV-2. So we know that the major receptor for SARS-CoV-2 is ACE2. So apparently in asthmatics, there's actually fewer receptors on uh, respiratory epithelial cells. So if there's fewer receptors, there's less opportunity for the virus to bind and enter a cell. So in asthmatics, it might be protective because they just have altered viral receptor expression, lowered viral receptor expression. Another possibility that was suggested by the authors of the main manuscript were asthmatics take inhaled corticosteroids, and these inhaled corticosteroids might actually confer protection against COVID. So because asthmatics take these corticosteroids, they might be in some ways protected as compared to non-asthmatics who don't have these, uh, who don't routinely take steroids. Uh, it's also possible that people of younger age have less comorbidities. And if you have less comor comorbidities, then the chance of you getting severe asthma and other complications is lower. And in the first study, the number of people in the asthmatic group were of younger age. So this was just uh, relevant to that particular study. Uh, another three sets of hypotheses that were suggested by uh, the people who wrote the review or the letter to the editor. And one hypothesis that they proposed was that in asthmatics, since you're chronically being exposed to allergens, you're chronically then um, trying to swell or quell the in inflammation that's seen and you develop some form of immune tolerance. And because you already have immune tolerance, it protects against the hyperinflammation that's seen in traditional uh, severe COVID disease. So because you're already in a setting of immune tolerance because of asthma, you're protected against hyperinflammation. Another um, possibility really is uh, since people with asthma already know how they suffer when they have viral infections, they were uh, hypervigilant. So when the pandemic came on, they had earlier protective shielding, they limited virus exposure and therefore limiting their viral exposure. So that's entirely possible that in general, asthmatics uh, were more careful about shielding and because of that, they limited the amount of ex virus that they were exposed to. And one and, and a final possibility really was it's well known that in asthmatics there's a mucus hypersecretion and this mucus, hypos, mucus hypersecretion might prevent viruses from penetrating uh, distal uh, cells or epithelial cells that um, are able to uptake the virus. But that's not all true because it's also known in other conditions like COPD, which is an, has an increased risk factor for developing severe COVID, that mucus hypersecretion occurs. So it's not, can be part of the explanation, but not the only explanation. So I thought this was very interesting um, and quite surprising that asthma, actually, if you have pre-existing asthma, you might be protected against poor outcomes in COVID. Uh, I hope that this was informative to you. Uh, several studies need to be still done to confirm these hypotheses. It's possible that one or more work uh, against um, severe COVID symptoms. And it's possible that in some cases, it's also genetic and not necessarily just the environmental factors as well. So thanks again. Uh, this is Anuja Matthew. It's February 3rd, 2021.